Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We are now in version 0.2.1.0. The patch to the Force Science update has been released, uh, coming with a whole bunch of bug fixes, including a fix to the heat issues that we have been having. Uh, well, a potential fix. That's mainly what I'm going to test. I'm going to see how much of a fix that is. It says re-entry heat balance improvements, so that's a little bit vague. Uh, I, I didn't find it, I mean, imbalance? I don't know. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Uh, experiments no longer lose progress when leaving science regions. We've seen that with the radiation experiment in particular. Map view UI styling was updated. Decouplers require, th there's some other things that weren't a huge thing for me, but uh, orbital decay fixed again. We will see whether it's truly fixed or not. Many bodies seem to have problems with it and uh, threw me off, including Elu, I think, in the, one of the more recent uh, episodes of the Four Science series. So, where do we begin? I would like to load up a save from the Ray's Exploration series, the Four Science series, where we were, like, with the space plane just outside... Uh, just at Leith SOI, if we could get that. Because I saved it plenty of times right at Leith SOI, right? And I want to bring it into Leif's atmosphere to see what happens. I mean, obviously, the main atmosphere that I'm super interested in is Leif's, because it killed me so many times. <laughs> okay, this seems to be Leif, yeah. Okay, so we're in Leif orbit here. Now, before, I had to deorbit deeply. In other words, I had to burn off a lot of speed. So first thing we're going to try is I'm just going to do a normal deorbiting around Leith and see if I survive. And we remember what happened with the Leith shuttle before. And this is the thick wing version. Okay, so... Ignition. Now this is uh, saved from the previous patch, but presumably the... I mean, the previous version, but presumably the patch has fixed things even with this save, so... We will see. Let me transfer the fuel out of the external pods, and then we will enter. Alright, well that's the best we can do there. Now, technically the wing thickness affecting the heat tolerance was supposedly a bug. I hope they haven't like just fixed that and not everything else. <laughs> I mean, in theory, I mean, I see uh, heat balance improvements is a little bit vague, isn't it? No, well, we're in the atmosphere. It's already sort of glowing. That's... that seems early to me. Now again, on this kind of entry, this space plane didn't survive. We have to make it slower in order for it to su survive. Now part of the problem was the hydrogen tanks not having great heat tolerance. And not being fully blocked by the wing. Boy, those windows sure look orange. Or at least the bits between the windows. Well, we're going up again, and that apoapsis is almost out of the atmosphere. So I'm gonna pitch down. Interesting, we're not going that much slower than when all the flame effects were going on. Okay, second entry, I guess. Still faster than, what, uh, than the point I had to slow down to to keep it safe prior to the patch. That was 1,500 meters per second. Well, it seems better. Which leads to the question, well, what about aero capturing at Leith? Is that now feasible with a space plane? It seems like there's a lot more going up than there was before. We should test how things fly in this version, maybe. But they didn't say anything about lift. But maybe change, they changed the atmosphere of Leif, so those parameters might have changed the way space planes would operate in it, too. But yeah, pods seemed to be fine, as long as they had a heat shield. I didn't have any problems with pods, but maybe they've made it worse for pods now, I don't know. 
I'm pretty confident that this is gonna be okay, but sure taking its time. Here, uh, let, why don't I just expose the hydrogen tanks at this point? Let's just let me tilt down. Go like here, here, heat. Get the hydrogen tanks. Uh, yeah, doesn't seem to be doing anything with them. Now we have to ask, is it too easy? No, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. We'll take it. We like our space planes surviving. Well, I guess while I'm here, I might as well land. Even though I'm just gonna get rid of this, and this will have never have happened. I wonder if Lay's been losing water and this terrain was actually once underwater. There, there seems to be a cliff up ahead. Oh, no, okay, oh, no, oh. oh. It's fine. I wasn't trying to land anyway. <laughs> uh, well, that was more, well, that was much of a cliff. Sort of. Anyway, I don't know why that was so rough, but we'll leave that be. That's not what I'm trying to test here anyway. Yep. Okay. So this. Yep. This is an arrow capture situation. So. Uh, we are passing by Lath and we want to see if we can aero capture. Let's we are going radial in. Let's just bring our orbit closer. We're not going that fast. We've already captured around Jewel and everything. Our orbit is actually pretty low. It's so low that we would be crashing into Jewel afterwards. So we're not super fast compared to Lath, but we're certainly faster than low Lath orbit. If we tried to manually capture now, it would just cost us 411. So again, not that fast, but certainly faster than low... And let's see how much faster it is than low lathe orbit. About a thousand faster than low lathe orbit. So that's pretty fast compared to the previous test. Um, we're going to try... I mean, I feel like it depends on how they change the atmosphere. Let's go for 40. We'll also see how these two tanks hold up. Okay, good enough. We don't really, really need those two tanks there, but it'll be interesting. So it is faster than Kerbin entry speeds from low Kerbin orbit, but the atmosphere of Leif should be thinner than Kerbin's atmosphere. 0.7 atmospheres versus 1. Ominous black haze there. Okay, here we go. Very dramatic. 2,800 meters per second. Oh, those tanks are getting hot. Oh, that tank too. Well, it's nice to see stuff getting hot at all. I mean, I was... I mean, I didn't want them to be too kind to us. Right. Don't want the devs to be cowed into submission as far as the heating is concerned. They should be a little bit harsh on us. But it looks, it seems pretty mild. The, the outrigger ones, which I would expect to overheat anyway, are having the worst of it, but they're still surviving here. And we have successfully aero captured. And that was a pretty good altitude too. 
Just for good measure, I'll do one more pass to bring it in and see about bringing it down. But, yep, that was a solid arrow capture. A little bit risky. There were heat bars and everything. So you can't take that lightly, and from a harsher orbit, like if you were just coming in from Kerbin, it probably wouldn't be a good idea. This is now more like low Kerbin orbit velocities. Very abscess, a little bit lower than the first pass. Okay, in the atmosphere. After this, I want to see what Eve's atmosphere is like. To inform me ahead of my attempt to send things into Eve's atmosphere. And I'll do that in a fresh save. A sandbox save. So this would be a nice arrow breaking with option to land here. Or we could boost that periapsis back up again. If we just wanted to stay in orbit. Okay, so Lathe is nicer now, <laughs> basically. Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna save this or anything. We're going to go back to the main menu and all right, start a new campaign. Um, sandbox. Heart overheating, yes, very important. Heat scaling here, by the way, if you wanted to change that. Uh, we might as well just allow that stuff. Let's uh, let's just have a pod with a victim. <laughs> okay, so well, well, yeah, we'll have a fairing around it, and we'll we'll see whether it overheats. We'll have a pretty harsh ascent, so it'll be very tempted to overheat. Okay, so that gives this little pod some delta v, and. We just need to launch it, but obviously we have to put it into a fairing because now this heat shield is very much poking out. I don't think they've improved the ejection force. They could at least put the the default ejection force in the middle. I mean, <laughs> that swerve isn't giving me the normal oomph that it does. But that's va atmosphere. In vacuum... That's a close call for transfer to Eve. I'll take it. Totally safe. Oh, the, the stars are moving now. That's some star non-movement during nighttime before. Okay, so... Off we go. <laughs> Very Kerbal. And we'll also go with a shallow trajectory befitting something with this kind of thrust weight ratio, which will also incur heat. But we'll be keeping the fairings on to see whether the stuff inside will be protected by the fairings, since there was some issue with that. So we're really pushing the tolerances here. In fact, those nose clones are glowing. You can see we've got thermal effects. I'm getting a little bit high here. Now we're really seeing how this goes here. Well, since it can survive with the fairing, let me see what happens when we release the fairing right now. I mean, it is a pod though, so it has high heat tolerance. But then again, we've got RTGs and we've got these engines and the parachute. The parachute, the docking port was the worst actually. We need to check on the docking ports, really. I think these are somewhat higher heat tolerance parts compared to the docking ports. It uh, doesn't seem to be keeping great track of my delta V right now. Or maybe that is my delta V and it was lying in the VAB, I'm not sure. Oh, the poor little pod's reaction wheel is having trouble with this. Gave it a test on the whole Delta V reading thing, and it is so confused about this sort of thing. Oh, they, oh, there's the UI changes, okay. So, actually, 
I don't know if we were seeing... The, no, I guess we didn't have an option to see this before. So, it's giving a little world icon. Instead of A and B, there's a world icon for the world and the spacecraft icon for the spacecraft. Now, I don't know if there's two spacecraft rendezvousing, is that a good thing? Which? How will we tell which one is us and which one is the target? Well, we, it probably once we do the mid-course correction, we can resolve that number two one into one point. So, we'll do this. This thing could probably just capture the pod around Eve. But, well, we might do that too. Uh, I think first we'll send the pod into arrow capture and then we'll load up an entry save where we saved at the EVE SOI entry and then use this to capture into orbit and then plunge it into EVE's atmosphere. Well, this was definitely overkill again. That's because I think the VAB was telling me much smaller numbers. And it's 90 kilometers that the atmosphere starts at. We'll, we'll go for 120 there. And that's our mid-course correction, 381. We have plenty for that, obviously. And off goes Bill. I wish they would at least tell us the time for the encountering Eve and leaving Eve. That's Having the times there is handy if we have multiple missions. This is not a good design, I just wanted something silly. So, please do not take this particular rocket design seriously. Now, what, what is it trying to tell me here? It has an intercept here when we actually have an encounter over there. Isn't this a bit complicated? Like... Can't we just skip this first one? <laughs> it's like... I guess that's the second one, but... It's obvious at this point which one we're going for. I don't recall it doing that in the previous patch. Also, it's sort of interesting to me that this is disjointed here. I mean, this is already showing the line in EVE SOI, so why is that like that? Okay, well, let's do a little bit of a radial first. And then we'll save. Just sort of plop the pod off. The pod will get itself a suborbital trajectory and we'll see how bad the heating is. Okay, that's just outside the atmosphere. Eve test one. Okay. Oh, now that's really suborbital. Um, probably a little bit too suborbital. Shouldn't have to go too far into use atmosphere. Let's try 70 kilometers. So that's 20 kilometers in, which is pretty deep and should be pretty harsh. Let's find out how that goes. I'll, I'll just save again. Okay, here we go. Got a heat shield and everything, so you know. Should be safe. But can it capture with this 70 kilometer altitude? Seems mild compared to Leith, honestly. Maybe the heat shield just makes it seem that way. Ablation is happening. I remember Eve being much worse, but then again, maybe I'm confusing it with Venus. Venus has a much thicker atmosphere. Well, that's a capture. We're going back up, so we've captured, but we're not coming straight down. Worth noting that that's the effect of this mass on this heat shield at that altitude. Honestly, with that, I don't think there's a need to test the situation where we're capturing with the stage. 
and I don't think I need to even change the altitudes. We'll see if a second pass at this altitude will bring us all the way down. But since it's captured us, that's a pretty good sign overall. Yeah, so let's go around and see if we can come down like this. For my EVE mission where I have to land the 10 Kerbals and bring them back, I wonder how effective the inflatable heat shield will be, or multiple inflatable heat shields will be for that. So we lost 0.28 tons of ablator there. Uh, I don't think that was enough. But okay, I mean, another pass. I, I'm convinced that we could just do another pass and bring it down, especially if we brought the periapsis down. That's not too interesting. I'm a little bit... I, I want to see some heat bars and explosions. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in opposite. We're going to come in nose first and make sure that we're... Um, make, make sure that the heat shield is doing stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, you know... For science. Sorry, Bill. Wait, the heat shield exploded first? Okay. <laughs> but, that, that was interesting. <laughs> that was unexpected. I was not expecting that. The heat shield exploded first. So like the the inside of the heat shield it has lower heat tolerance than like practically anything else. So there you have it, my initial heat testing in the new patch. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.